And we're live! We did it! Oh, hello! Whoa! What oh. sort of penchant? Pray I ask the magic mirror am I residing in? Oh my god, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this you, is, didn't, you didn't like my bit. You're the literal worst. <laughs> I just, I like, I like this, I like this zone that I'm in right now. It's incredible because it's like Bunny was like, "Hey, TK, do you want to do this with Katie May or Carlos?" And I like stared into the deadlights. <laughs> I was like, "And you picked me." Carlos was busy. <laughs> ouch! <laughs> ouch! Ouch! Owie! <laughs> to make my head oh. a little bit bigger because I scroll back because if I'm too close to the computer my internet gets jealous. Hello everybody uh you know us as TK and Katie May from Indoor Recess but we're also like your your XP squad. Custom yes. experience squad. Yeah so TK and I are on the XP team at Roll20 uh which is the customer experience team. We've been doing that. TK you've been here a bit longer than I have. How long have you been here now? Uh, six months longer than you have, so almost ah. an entire baby. Wow. And then I'm like the last third of the baby because I'm coming up on my three month anniversary now. So if we wanted to talk about it, like I'm actually, it's only been like two and a half well, months. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, it's been nine months for me. So we're now implying that it's a 12 month baby carriage. And I. Yeah, that, no, that's exactly the math I was trying to do. So I think we nailed that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so yeah, we actually, we, uh, we are experienced team members, which means that our job is to make sure that, uh, customers and users are having a real good time. And I think that we do that most oft when we're not bullying them, but that's its own, that's its own thing, TK. We do that in our off hours. Oh, I, I do a lot of bullying. Yeah, but just during the off hours. <laughs> uh, only then. Only then do only we bully then people. Specifically, specifically those times. Legally only then um so we are really excited to bring to you we're gonna go on a sweet little tour today because good news uh roll 20 now has every di uh, wizards of the coast expansion on our marketplace these are the last two these were the final horcruxes it's <laughs> incredible i am so old that i dabbed and my shoulder popped oh my god <laughs> Um, ooh, I'm almost too TK old to make crux <laughs> jokes. Um, so yeah, so the, it's the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide and the Dungeon Master's Guide have been released last week. Was it last week? Last. Wait. What are what's time? Uh, Help me. Uh, um, you know what? I want to say last week. I want to say Thursday. Okay. So it's been out for about a week. Um, and so we're just going to go on a quick tour of it so you can see sort of what the difference is between having a book hardcover. I think I got the DMG behind me. I do. The hardcover book. And sort of what the advantages of maybe getting it on Roll20 are. We can take a mm -hmm. look um, at Roll20 in a game and uh, when you get a compendium, what the compendium looks like. So we're going to jump in between both books. Um, for those of you who might not know, I'll tell you what the DMG is. So the DMG is the Dungeon Master's Guide. The Dungeon Master's Guide it was written to be just a ha an additional handbook for Dungeon Masters. It came out after the PHB, of course. Um, so there's going to be a lot of tools in there. Primarily, most players know, know it as the place with all the magic items. So we'll be able to get to see a lot of that, as well as some of the additional stuff I feel like people forget a lot about. Um, some of the rules, we're going to check that out. TK, what's skag besides something a man on the internet would yell at me? <laughs> it's the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and it's actually one of the few, like, compendium expansions that I don't own in hardback. Just because I came into, uh, I came into 5th edition post- Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and so almost all of that information was already being reprinted in other books and stuff. Oh, okay. um, but it's got uh, one of the one of the largest expansions for uh, sub races, subclasses. Um, it's got some spells. It had a can I say that word? Uh, a, a gross amount of I was like, there we go, mm, there we go, there of. We go. Uh, backgrounds that's like the big thing that people know oh, about yeah. it is backgrounds like a lot of your like um 
Uthgard barbarians, your pirates. Uh, actually, pirate, I think. No, sailor is from uh, Ghost of Saltmarsh. Uh, but it does have, like, a lot of, um, like, bandits and things like that. Uh, just stuff that you wouldn't typically be able to find because it's all about, like, it, it was setting up for a lot of, like, water deep. So it has, like, a city investigator and stuff. Yeah, so if I don't know what the Sword Coast is, what is the Sword Coast? Uh, the Sword Coast is a region on the western coast of Faerun. Faerun being a large uh, sort of western European continent on the planet of Toril, uh, which is the site of the Forgotten Realms. That is where the majority of 5th edition uh, advan uh, adventures and information and settings books are for right and so yeah skag is i i have to not laugh every time i say skag uh skag is a setting book and so of course you're gonna have uh the best time if you're looking to actually put it you know use the sword coast as the place you're running your campaign but also when we took a take a look at it today uh tk mm -hmm. and i are more like homebrew dms so I want to be able to take a look at it and from yeah. the perspective of how do I how do I take the uh, information available here and make it work best for my campaign. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do that too. So it's like just back on the subject of Sword Coast for people who are like looking to this is going to have most of your urban type of backgrounds mm, so less of your less of your oh i'm a forester hanging out in the woods and more of your i'm a i'm an orphan i'm an urchin i'm a sh i'm a pickpocket or a beggar i'm a wily one i'm a wily one i'm a dickensian wild child i'm an orphan <laughs> just living um, in yeah. the gutters yeah and actually eating TK, bread <laughs> tk is just gonna give you a wealth of possible character voices throughout this whole stream as it's well, incredible so. i i plan yeah. to get all of that creativity and energy out now so that i have nothing but dust whenever oh, it comes to the game tonight? that we have nice. to do tonight cool. <laughs> yeah if you don't incredible. if you don't know tk and i we uh we'll see you over on twitch.tv TV slash D and D here just in a few hours time, three hours if I math, because um, we do we do Mythic Odysseys of Theros every Tuesday night. That's a late night D and D. They put us real late so they can't get sued. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we'll be over there. So you got a whole night with us. I yeah, hope you enjoy. I think you would like. I believe Katie May said it best when she said that we are the James Corden of Dungeons and Dragons. Is that correct? <laughs> Please don't put that kind of slander on my God-fearing name. Ah! Oh my God. Okay, so the first thing that you're want gonna want to know about uh, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide in the DMG is that they are not modules, which means when you go to create a game, we're gonna we're gonna pretend to create a game because I've already created this game, so I could set it up ahead of time and impress all of you. When you go to create a game and it says mm -hmm. choose a module you will see that it is not, neither one of them are on the side. That's because they're compendium expansions. And so any information that you need from them is actually going to be in your compendiums. And it's easy to tell if something's going to be a module or a compendium expansion if when you search for it in the marketplace, let's just put court, Sword Coast because there's probably not very many that have that in the name. Let's when you search out. for it in the marketplace and you look up here, it's going to tell you it's a module. If this was a module, it would tell you. Sorry for all the extra stuff that you're seeing on my screen. Because I work here, I get extra buttons that you've never seen before. <laughs> um, but when you come down here, you see it says add-on and compendium in an art pack, but you don't see anything that says module here. So that's how you know that it's not going to be a module. As opposed to... Icewind Dale, which is going to be... Yeah, more... let's let's say Storm King's Thunder. Yeah. If when you click on Storm King's Thunder and you look in the URL, which you actually can't see, uh, one second. Well, it also says right underneath owned, this item is a module. Yeah, so... this is a module. Um, so when you go to create a game and you want to make sure that... Um, that the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide or the Dungeon Master's Guide are in there, what you really want to do is you want to go to your game settings. And that's over here on your settings page. You can see a little gear. The gear is usually indicative of settings. Um, you go, so game setting is right on there. 
do 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 it's not a public thing make sure because you're not actually assigning a game to this it, for me you're not if you had clicked a module you would be you can always if you're doing a homebrew game just go down and select according to the character sheet because by default whatever character sheet you select is the system that you're going to use so then you're going to go to your compending settings and for this stream we've turned everything except for our big three and the sword coast adventurers guide off and that's so that you know exactly what you're looking at um now, TK, how do I know what the difference is between making sure I have, if I want my players to see this um, so they can pick the new fun backgrounds and options, what do I have to make sure I do while I'm here in this menu? You have to make sure that you've turned on your compendium sharing. So you'd say yes. And then you would share your slot with them. Like basically you would be like, yes, I want to share this with them. And you save. Do, do, do. And see, it pops up there. There you go. Right there. And now Katie May can go through the uh, the um, search functions and everything and do stuff while I'm not paying attention. So this is so that a table doesn't have to buy it more than once if you all would like to play it. Exactly. Because um, that would be very sad. So I, I, can, I can share five games. That's what these slots are. I can share five games with a maximum of 15 players. Um... And now when Katie Mae comes in here, let's make sure we save our changes. I'm like, I, I know. I saved them. But I'm glad it asked because when I made this game earlier today, I didn't you click did the not? save changes mm. button. And I got into the game and I was like, where are the maps though? Where are the maps? Where are the maps? I don't know where I put him. So then what are the what do so then we have to do our game add-ons next, right? Yep, we gotta do game add-ons next. So I've already added them in here, but the Sword Master's Guide comes with um I think eight maps, I wanna say. Is nice. it eight? Let me look. Let me look at the I gotta look at the sheet because I've already loaded the maps in and so I don't want y'all to watch me count maps. Um, no, I think we should do that. Just a nice. <laughs> We're probably going to have to. We're going to probably going to have to. And the Sword Coast Adventurers Guide, I think, comes with uh, 10 maps. Or... No, the, the Sword Coast Adventurers Guide comes with like six world maps and stuff. And you'll know how many six there are. Six world maps. Yeah, wow. they're like huge world maps. And so it's there's like a map of Faerun, and then there's a map of like each individual, like the, the Moonshay Isles and uh never winter um actually i don't know if never winter's in there it might be uh baldur's gate is definitely in there water deep is in there water deep baldur's gate never winter those are all your sword coast your big sword coast cities luskin um candle keep is part of the sword coast if you've played any of the baldur's gate games uh regardless of whether they were on console or on pc even though they're different stories you've been in the sword coast and so the big difference here between the add-ons category and the compendium sharing is that the add-on is just going to be for maps in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, for Tasha's, I think it's like puzzles are the add-on. Yes, they have puzzles. Um, and so, and then the difference is, is compendium, that's like your backgrounds and stuff that your character, that you're going to be able to access in the compendium search category and that yep. your players are going to be add, able to add to their character sheet. So if you don't need any maps, and you just wanted those backgrounds to add to your game, you don't have to worry about the add-on section. Yeah. You can just launch right in. And even if you remove an add-on from here, then you get to, uh, you can always put it back in. That's true. So it does have a thing that pops up and says like, this isn't going to patch, but that's fine. You just put it back in. So you ready to launch? I think we are. Let's let's load into the game. It'll be a heck of delight. Cause I I'm know excited. we're gonna make some characters, aren't we? Uh, are we do are we legally cleared to um, make them? Uh, I say yes. Does roll twenty trust us enough to make characters? Uh, they trust enough us enough to to actually uh, stream this. So I assume yeah, the I'm, answer I'm is shocked yes. Carlos isn't here trying making sure we don't burn the whole place down. Well, he has no choice. <laughs> and if you haven't been in roll twenty for a while, you can look over and see our little chat function. Uh, no yeah. longer is the green welcome bar here. We got a nice little 
nice little aesthetic going yeah. on. It also automatically clears the chat for you. So mm -hmm. you don't have like a bunch of stuff down here. And then you can always click there to see the rest of the entries. There's still the hover to invite players. Um, and yeah, that's all kinds of super fun stuff. We also have our page toolbar, which is where our add-ons loaded in. Do you want to look at any of these maps in particular? Ooh, um, well, let's start with like the Sword Coast, like the world map. Oh, okay. Uh, let's we do, do you want to do Sword Coast in the, in the world? Is that what it is? Yeah. Or you want to do Faerun? Uh, which do you think would be better? You know, Oh, it does know have them. Neverwinter. I knew Neverwinter was in here. I, I freaking knew it. <laughs> I almost called you a nerd while we were streaming on a tabletop Stop channel. Stop it! <laughs> and then I was like, wait. <laughs> Don't be mean to me! I knew also, Neverwinter you can see that uh, we've actually recently, also Roll20, we've been working a lot on um, just improving existing features. So you'll notice that the pages function has changed recently as well. We now have true duplication. So you yeah. can uh, just straight up duplicate pages. It's very cool. Um, some updated options and interfaces. So yeah. that's what we're looking at right now. Let's go, let's, uh, let's look at It's great because I don't have to click on the page anymore to get an option to bring the options up and then do all the duplicate stuff. Right. Um, which one? Oh, I'm sorry. Did we say Faerun? Take or... me to Faerun. Faerun. All right, let me scroll out just a little bit. So we've got like the Heartlands and stuff. It's been a while since they've done anything in the Heartlands. Um, wow, but... look at this map. Yeah, isn't it pretty? I like it's it because it's a... got like a sort of like sepia wine stained. Yeah, so I these love are like it a lot. the Moonshade Isles, which is where like a, a just a ton, just a a, a ton of like uh, druids and like elves and stuff live. That's like okay. Um, it's it's like midsummer over there. It's where the edge lords like, live. I yeah. got you. No, not edge lords. Like like the hippies, the murder hippies. It's the murder hippies. Okay. All right. Also, I was a little. I don't see. I don't think I see the spine of the world on here. Um, unless I am misremembering what the mountains are supposed to look like. Is this the spine of the world? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. What were we talking about? You were talking about the spine of the world. But yes. um, so this, is, this is like a basic map. This is going to be your world map that you can have your players on. Yeah. Um, this is, and once you actually have this map, you can, of course, then add any GM, secret GM info that you need on the GM overlay. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite things to do as players start unfurling at a map. I secretly put in where they've been, where they're going. Wow. There yeah. it all goes. Yeah, so you can control the the opacity um, for whatever's on the GM overlay as well. So in case you don't want words all over your map. But if you do like words all over your map and weird, cute sea monsters and stuff, um, maybe you could turn it on. But you know, up. maybe maybe your players haven't unlocked the name of the location yet. Maybe they don't know. Ooh, yeah. Maybe they're tasked with car being the cart cartographers of the realm. Yeah, and if they're doing that, then you can just grab something in there and move it to the map layer. And then when they're actually on here, they'd actually see it. Oh, I think it's I think it moved all the way to the bottom. <laughs> it did. You're going to have to put it in the back. I'm I'm a fool. Advance just send it to the back. Yeah, I'll send the the whole map to the back. Boom, there it is. <laughs> there we are. That's Perfect. me, not a fool. And so there with the overlay all the way down. Now they've got the heartlands on there. Isn't that fun? I'm going to move that back cute. to the GM layer actually. <laughs> stop. Yeah, we don't want to stop messing it. around like a fool. Okay. <laughs> So this is your basic world map uh, functionality, which I am sure most people who are familiar with Roll20 know. But I just want to go through the basics. I feel like sometimes the, the bare bones can get overlooked. Bones. Sorry. Okay, don't bones laugh because I said the word bones. Bones. <laughs> um, okay. So then do we have any, um, like, what other kind of maps do we got going on? So these are like world maps. Do we have any, like... Um, yeah, give me like that ship map. Let me, this let one? me see some more of it. A... So like the DMG comes with a ton of like sample maps in case it's like your first time ever playing and stuff like that. It's very basic maps, which are very cool. Um, and several of them, yes, including this one, have dynamic lighting set up. Ooh, what's yeah. dynamic lighting, TK? Oh, I would be more than happy to tell you. Dynamic lighting is lighting that is quote unquote, dinamic. I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't believe this. Essentially, um, 
the GM has what's known as an omniscient view of the world. And if you want your characters to have a more personal view of the world, uh, I'm just going to grab like a, I grab like a monster or something. Uh, what kind of monster should I get? Uh, a catablapa. <sighs> I, I don't even know if that's the right way to pronounce it. All right, it. goblin it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. I guess I guess you don't like hanging out with a trained improviser. A trained improviser. Get well, no, let's take here. the time to make the character. I think <gasps> this is a great time. Oh, we should. One we'll sec. make our character. I, I do want to just like show real quick before we get into to character tomfoolery. I want to show real quick the uh, the dynamic layer by giving a goblin some eyesight. Most of the goblins and stuff are already. Um, most of these monsters are already programmed in with their dynamic lighting settings. So as you can see, I'm moving them all around this deck. And he can't see nothing. He's like, what's going on? Hey, what the hecky? And so you can see in real time this light moving all around. Moving all around. And then he's inside. Ooh. And so this is dim light in here. Ooh, spooky. So dynamic lighting is a feature only for our pro or plus users. Um, but a lot of our expansion, like most of like when you get Icewind Dale or Storm King's Thunder, any of the maps that you would find in your book are going to come with dynamic lighting already made for you. Um, that's something that we do on our end. So you don't have to go in and do it yourself. Um, so that's one of the core differences between buying a book and getting a roll 20 thing is that it's a lot of it tries to minimize the amount of prep that the dungeon master is going to have to do okay let's are you are you going wild i'm limiting his field of vision so he can only see what's oh. in front of him see i love that that's so cool yes because we can't see in a 360 degrees we're not owls <laughs> <laughs> yes but you've got some amount of swivel yeah, okay, we have peripheral vision, but okay. <laughs> but I can't see behind my head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, get out of here, goblin. Yeah, you, we, you're not our characters. Get gerblin. Sorry, I don't... Oh, it sounded kind of mean when I said it like that. <laughs> Speaking of characters, get out of here, um, goblin. Yeah, let's, 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 let's look through... Yeah, because I think the, um, I'm looking through the, uh, all of the maps in, like, Skag are going to be more world maps. Mm -hmm. And then in DMG, you get more, like, encounter maps is what I'd call them. Yeah, for sure. You do have some, like, city maps and stuff um, in Sword Crest Adventurer's Guide. But, yeah, definitely the the DMG is more of your encounter maps. We've got, like, little, little um, cave things. Sorry, y'all can see, like, the blue stuff because I'm still on the... But these are the <laughs> lines that are the dynamic lighting lines. Yep. So this is what the light knows to bounce off of and uh, occlude itself from. Exactly. And, like, honestly, y'all can see your lines don't have to be perfect. No. Like, there's no there's no special there's no We special follow the Hannah Montana it. principles here. Nobody's perfect. Ew. Anyway, so <laughs> creating a character... Uh, create creating a character. Uh, let's 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 walk through uh, a character because I want to give this character so many cool magic items. I'm ready. Okay, what's the name of our character first? Um, Hannah. Oh God, last name. Well, I don't think you're gonna want it to be Montana. So Splondana. Hannah Splondana. I love her. I love her too. All players. Uh, edited by all players. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. Hannah Wyoming is also a great suggestion. <laughs> Hannah Wyoming. One. Okay, wow. Naomi Wyoming. Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, no, you're you're great. Um, I'm just going to do some work for us on the side here while we make this character. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're just searching for a token. <laughs> I, I am. I'm working on a token right now. I knew now. it. Um, so, okay, so you're going to know Skag a bit better than I do, TK. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the backgrounds, man, what kind of character do we think Hannah Splendana is going to be? Hannah Splendana? Oh, 
We should probably talk about the character mancer first. I'm getting too ahead of myself. Yeah, so we're going to pop right into the character sheet and start using a character mancer. Heck yeah. Welcome to the character mancer. Congratulations. Now, remember, we only have our big three and the and the uh, Sword Quest Adventurer's Guide in here. So we're not going to see a whole bunch of stuff from uh, Eberron. We're not going to see Wildmount or anything like that. Um, we're just going to see what's new. Let's start with our race. Um, honestly, when you when you limit out of Eberron and Wildmount, you don't limit too many of the races or anything. We also don't have any cold bald press in here. So <laughs> stay away, Midgard. So uh, Asmar as a dmg but as you can see right here we can make a half drow half moon elf all of that stuff all of the fancy flavors of half elves you can make now because i of... didn't know that you are a robot <laughs> Cover <for> me, <laughs> okay i'm covering for you katie may didn't know that you could be uh, a half aquatic elf half drow half moon half sun elf and half wood elf which are all elves that um for the most part become uh more available to you via the the sea of swords and uh the moonshay isles uh with the exception of the half drow obviously um but all of these were you know setting up essentially for a water deep which, which is a very metropolis place it's very egalitarian and it's very like cosmopolitan it has lots of races mixing and matching in there so do you want to do one of the skag races i would love that more than anything in this world which which half elf would you like uh there's water elf underground elf moon oh no elf, it doesn't show up elf, on stream elf. how rude it doesn't it doesn't show the little drop down menu what the hecky um here just click on one so we can prove that it's real oh i'm sorry what if i showed a players did it do it <gasps> that's so weird oh my gosh that's so weird anyway let's click on sun elf just to prove that these things actually are real there we go isn't that weird? Oh, that's so weird that OBS doesn't pick it's that up. Chrome. It's Chrome that does it. It's you not think it's OBS. Chrome? <gasps> what? Oh, because Chrome is doing it as a privacy thing. Oh, mm -hmm. Chrome, this isn't my bank account. <laughs> Just please. <laughs> Chrome, please. Okay, so as you can see, this is what the half sun elf looks like. They're very like, um, they're very like charisma focused. Um, yeah. Uh, some half elves in Faerun have a sp racial trait, blah, blah, blah. If your DM allows it, I don't care about this. A half elf of moon or sun elf can choose the high elf's weapon training or cantrip. Woo. That's fancy. I'm not really a person who loves um, uh, racial abilities, but, you know, that's life. So, thoughts? I believe the half drow can, like, cast dancing lights. Um, Ooh. I think as a as a normal spell they've got drow magic um which lets them cast like dancing lights i want to say this is so cool i'm literally just actually getting yes. distracted they Let's... do they can cast cast dancing lights oh, i'm sorry i want to be i want to be half aquatic elf please aquatic elf like a little mermaid elf okay yes please all right so we're just gonna go with our uh ability score increases what do you want we already get plus two for charisma. Okay, Hannah Splendana. What do we, what do, we, how do we feel about her? How do I feel about Hannah Splendana? Um, obviously, yes. she's very, like, introverted. But of I feel course. like there's a wild side to her yes. that nobody has met yet. Like, she needs somebody to really oh. unlock that side of her. So maybe it's like, maybe it's like a barbarian. <gasps> Yes, like when yeah. she goes into a rage, that's when like she becomes really extroverted. Yeah. So, so she's let's, really let's... the best of both worlds. Exactly. You get me. Okay, so let's do Let's uh... do <laughs> They're gonna be like, Hey, I really loved your stream. Um, <laughs> the part the second half where you made it Hannah Montana based was questionable. <laughs> <laughs> We're never gonna get tapped for this stuff again. Enjoy no, it while fine. it lasts. Um, so let's do like strength and constitution. Yeah, let's do constitution. She needs those hit points. Uh, I almost them. would say instead of strength, dexterity, because barbarians don't wear armor. Okay, I feel you. Let's do it. 
uh, uh, she's an aquatic elf, so she can get, she has the, the chance to choose a swimming speed of 30 speed, 30 feet. So we can do keen senses, skill versatility, or swim speed. Oh, wow. Swim speed. Mm, yeah. She's going to rustle a freaking shark. I don't know she's what. She's going to wrestle a shark. I don't know what words we're allowed to say here. <laughs> She's going to frickin' wrestle a shark. Okay, so there aren't any new languages. Um, what language proficiency do you want her to have besides common and elvish? Celestial. Celestial, yeah, let's do it. Uh, then she has dark vision and fey ancestry, of course. Um, let's go to classes. Now, for everybody who needs to know this, um, if you were, have ever made a character... In the character mancer, you know that you pretty much start at level one. If you want to add a subclass from a new compendium expanse expansion, you need to go to at least level three because that's when subclasses become available. Thus, whenever you're making a class here, those subclasses are not going to show up. So, but I think I think Hannah Splendan is at least level five. Okay. So when we make her, we'll just come back and and yeah. level five. All right, yep. so what are we looking at for skill proficiencies? We've got animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, and survival. Survival for sure. For sure. Also, maybe intimidation. Okay. Uh, you think she has, like, a really strong belt? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, she has unarmored defense, so when she's not wearing any armor, her armor class equals 10 plus whoop, 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 her dexterity modifier plus her constitution modifier. Since we put in dexterity and constitution, she's going to get even more. And she can still right. use a shield and get that benefit. Nice. Um, she's got 12 hit points right now. Ability score. Heck it, we'll roll for stats. Let's do it. Did you already add a picture I, I saw that. About. Incredible. Um, okay, you, you ready? Do you want to drop her token at some point too? I will. Yeah, roll d forty six. Drop lowest for sure. Chat's not gonna be able to see some of it because my face is in the. Oh wait, no, it's Yikes. not. Okay, they're not great. That's that's not that's not good. That's not but terrible. You know Let's do dexterity and constitution for her highest, obviously, and then we'll do. Uh, remember, remember that one time when I asked my player to make their own character <laughs> and they got a four dexterity. I feel like she has. I feel like she has. What's her dump stat? It's gotta be wisdom. Yeah, it can't be. It can't be charisma. No. All right, so, so we're the looking next most in, like next intelligent, and then the charisma is the eleven. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, so intelligence ten. Charisma yeah. 11. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I feel like that that's fair for a 16-year-old growing up in right. underwater California. Right. Well, she, here's the thing. Her parents are divorced, so she spends half of her time uh, in Neverwinter and half of her time in the... And you know, the school system's got to be, like, so different in between. In between um, each place, right? So, let's talk about backgrounds, which is, like, the biggest thing for Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. You can't see the drop-downs, but I, I assure you, they are plentiful and beautiful. Um, so, our brand new stuff, not counting what's what's in, like, the, the PHB and SRD. Mm -hmm. SRD, actually, I think, only has Acolyte. Um, so brand new because of Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, City Watch, City Watch Investigator, Clan Crafter, Cloistered Scholar, Courtier, or Courtier, uh, Faction Agent, Far Traveler, uh, Inheritor, Knight of the Order, Mercenary Veteran, Urban Bounty Hunter, Uthgart Tribe Member, member and Water Davian Noble. So what's an Uthgard tribe member? That is like a uh, a barbarian from the frozen north. Click on it. I want to see. Okay. So that's like um they're going to be up closer they're going to be from places up closer to like the 10 towns and stuff. Um But you'll notice that every yeah. time you click on it you get a nice little sauce description. Yeah, you of, do. of the lore from Skag. It includes all of like their skill proficiency, tool proficiencies. If this were Tasha's, the set of tattoos marking your loyalty to Uthgar and your tribal totem could also be 
a magical tattoo because That's Tasha's so does true. that now. But we don't have Tasha's in this book. But if we did, that would be a thing. Um, so, so the nice thing about these backgrounds is if you have a player who is, who really wants an anchor um, into their character, a lot of the times um, dungeon masters have a hard time coming up with one. This is going to give you a really nice in that your that your player can stick to, right? Mm -hmm. If they know that they're specifically a barbarian, like of this place, mm -hmm. right? That's going to give them. They can go back and they can like Google what that is, and they can have ideas and really build off of something. So if you're looking for um, backgrounds that give players who maybe want a little bit more spice in their life um, versus a player who's like, I don't want any lore info. I want to make it up all on my own. Um, this is this is a nice little nice little seasoning. Yeah. Speaking of seasoning, one of the I'm going to just throw in like a pinch of lore. One of the big reasons why you're looking at this and being like, hmm, an Uthgard barbarian that kind of sounds more northern than Sword Coast. This one is more like, uh, it includes the Rashomon or the Rashemi uh, barbarians of which Minsk and Boo are members and they are big players in like the whole Neverwinter scene, which is part of the Sword Coast. Uh, and, and it's okay, Katie Mae, if you don't get it, but people in in the chat. I, that's the thing. It's like that's that's the whole that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah, you, exactly. I cool. very bad at lore. So, do we <laughs> want to choose the tribe member as a as a background? I don't think that's very Hannah's Blondana. No, I think that she is more like. Oh, I do love urban bounty hunter. Um. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. A sixteen-year-old bounty hunter whose parents are divorced. It's like yes. that. Do you remember that uh, Disney Channel movie? Is it Disney Channel Barely Lethal, where it's like a sixteen-year-old uh, assassin? No, Disney Channel would never name. I don't think. I don't lethal. think. I don't think it's Disney. Now that I think about it, but no, it's not. Who is it? Who made it? Uh. Oh, I did watch this. Yes, though. you did. I know you did. I did see this with mine. But own it's eyes. like a sixteen-year-old who's like an assassin, and then she's like, "I want to be normal. I want to go to high school." It's uh, uh it was actually and... distributed by A24. Who? Uh, you know the people who did. This sounds uh... YouTube. -y. What is it? No, 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 no. What no, is A24? No. A24 also did things like um. Let me, I, I want to make sure I'm giving you the right euphoria. Um, what? Euphoria? <laughs> John, John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bun. What? Uh, Rami <laughs> at home with Amy Sedaris. Uh, Moonbase 8. Two Dope Queens. I Pod Save America. I can't believe this. Yeah. Not that those things were like particularly amazing or anything, but it's like the humor is so much more. I know. Well, anyway, so I think Bounty Hunter, Bounty is, Hunter. is definitely Hannah Splendana's vibe. Like Batgirl. Because it's like, even though she's jumping between each other places, she can always right. pick up a job, let right? Me, let me use, let me do Bounty Hunter, ding dongs. Sorry, I'm talking to my computer. My computer's being a, a, a booty head and not loading. There we go. Urban Bounty Hunter. Okay, so let's see. Here's I'm getting a very like Buffy vibe from her. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, you are in ear to the ground. You're in frequent contact with the people of the segment of society that your chosen quarries move through. These I'm going to give her proficiency in musical instrument for no reason. I think that's fair. Tambourine. Um, the criminal underworld, the rough and tumble folk of the streets or members of high society. This connection comes in the form of any co uh, contact in any city you visit. A person who provides information about the people and places of the local area. Very nice. Nice. So that's like specific to the background. Yeah. Um, and basically she can talk to anybody and get information. Wow. Hannah Splendana is so powerful. Yeah. She's incredible. Uh, do you want to roll for personality traits? Oh, yes, please. More than anything. And of course, y'all can't see this because Chrome is terrible. Um, but you do see this little arrow beside there. You can choose from a little list of different uh, personality traits. We're going to roll because we're dangerous. Ooh, I like being dangerous. <laughs> I know. 
I am incredibly slow to trust. Those who seem the fairest often have the most to hide. <gasps> I, I feel that. I feel oh my like gosh, a back a backup dancer like stabbed her in the back. <gasps> oh my like, god. Um, oh no. What's the name of that? What's the name of that musical? Oh no! It just it oh, just. Oh, uh, n- not Chicago. No, the other one. Um, Dream Girls. Dream Girls. It's Dream Girls. Is it? Is Dream Girls what you're thinking of? Yes. Oh. Because her because her backup singer. Hooked up. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hello, hello, <laughs> welcome to Dungeons 20. and Dragons. <laughs> we need to stop. Okay, so Hannah Montana doesn't pay attention to the risks in the situation. Never tell me the odds. Never tell me I feel the like odds. We already knew that about Hannah Montana. I feel like, taker. yeah, I really feel like we're just casting the uh, Bad Blood music video. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ideal. Oh, snap. Freedom. Chains are meant to be broken, as are those who would forge them. <laughs> she like incredible! She <laughs> says, you have nothing to lose but your chains! Rise, comrades! <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Her bond. I'm guilty of a terrible crime. I hope I can redeem myself from... Where... She caused her parents' divorce. Oh, my God. Who did you kill? Okay her flaw are you ready yes i'm nervous about the person we're creating i know they're taking on an omniscience when When i see something valuable i can't think about anything but how to steal it (gasps) hannah Montana, a regular robin hood incredible oh she's so powerful oh my gosh all right let's go next i can't believe i'm gonna go to theros and hannah splantana is gonna be waiting there for me uh we're just gonna do class equipment um, that sounds fair. Because nothing nothing uh has really like what kind of weapons she use? Uh the 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 juiciest ones you can find. The juiciest one? A whip. Does she have a trident? Oh, a trident. Oh, good yeah, idea. Yeah, because she's she's an aquatic elf. Okay. Half aquatic okay, half so elf. and then I need um a simple weapon. Like a club, oh. dagger, dart, uh great club, oh, darts. hand axe. Darts. Hell yeah. And I, I want you to know she's not so cool. blow darts. Like throwing darts. Like throwing darts. Okay. Yeah, because she's really good at it. Oh. Yeah, and it makes sense she wouldn't have a blow dart underwater. No. No, no, no. Actually, she probably wouldn't have a throwing dart. Actually, a blow dart would make more sense underwater. Maybe she's like part... She's like part blowfish and she just like sticks her thumb in her mouth and like shoots. No, no, no. You must stop this line of rationale. (laughs) The arcane Go. is a mystery to us. Sorry, Hannah Splendana. Uh, we don't have any feats yet. Um, the magic's in your heart. Uh, how old is she? 16? Uh, yeah. Sweet okay. 16. 16. Okay. Um, old race. 5'3". <laughs> Young old roots. Okay. 5'3"? So me. Yeah. She's my size. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes, exactly. Same size oh, as 16 God, I always year forget you're small. Well, I'm not such a towering (laughs) presence over my psyche (laughs) i hear that a lot i hear from a lot of people that they think i was gonna be taller as they stared down upon me from their ivory thrones wait what do you mean (laughs) you can't beat me up they like (laughs) yeah they like put their little hands around my like under my (laughs) arms and lift me into their tote bag yes (laughs) uh wait none of your business no eye color Eyes uh, two, two. Yeah. How many eyes? Seven. Hair long, long. Skin aquatic. Aquatic. Eyes. <laughs> right too. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, we haven't chosen our alignment. Ah, oh, fools. Um. Ugh. Where's my? Where do I choose? My maybe alignment? she doesn't have an alignment. Yeah, she maybe she doesn't. She doesn't know yet. She's Heck sixteen. It. Yeah, she's sixteen. We don't know. She gotta, she gotta figure out. Yeah. Your class allows you to choose up to two school skills, and I didn't choose any skills. No. You didn't choose your skills, TK. I thought we did. It was intimidation and survival. Oh, yeah. You must have. I'm so sorry. That's my fault. How right. dare you? Apply changes, and now we're going to immediately level up. The nice thing about this is that I can actually watch TK do this. Mm-hmm. Um... So, like, from my screen at home. So, a lot of the times when you're a dungeon master helping a player build a character, 
it can be kind of hard to like survey someone and make sure that they're doing it the right way. Yeah. I speak from experience. <laughs> um, so this is a very easy way to like watch your player as they go through and like listen and hear their ideas and their thoughts for the world while you're feverishly taking notes about Hannah Splendana and what she did to her parents, Devoris. Feverish. Yeah, so now we've created her and all of her, her skag feats and everything are just right there. Boom. Well, TK, Tricky. I really feel like Hannah Splendana, you know, her parents are constantly trying to win her over. Uh-huh. Um, so they're always giving her gifts. Ugh, I'm ready. But Wait, we have to level her up. Do we? I thought she was level five. We have to choose a a, a subclass. Oh, were there new subclasses? In? There are new subclasses. <gasps> I didn't know. There Take are. There are so many. There's twelve in uh. There's Sword twelve. Course in yeah. Wow. Twelve. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to level her up with the uh, character mancer. Let's level her all the way up to five. Uh, level one plus. Okay. Just some gentle yes. map. Yeah, nice. I did nice. it. So now nice. she can choose She can choose her primal path, which is a, a, a subclass. And the one for, um, uh, there are two for Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and that is Battle Rager and Totem Warrior. Uh, Totem Warrior was, like, redone, I think, for Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, so there's, like, okay. a, a slight difference between it and the PHB, but I'm not sure which one Tell it is. Tell me what Battle Rager's like, TK. Okay! <laughs> I didn't mean that to use that voice, that and I violent. did it anyway, and I... Wow. I'm really upset. Um... Sorry, I clicked the information thing and I'm waiting for it to load. Ooh, a life of danger. A life of danger? Yeah, my battle rager armor. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Yay. Whoa, what the heck word is this? Known as Kuldjarg. Kuldjarg. Literally axe idiot. Okay, that's rude. Uh, oh, Battle Ragers are dwarf followers of the gods of war and take the ba path of the Battle Rager. They specialize in wearing bulky spiked armor and throwing themselves into combat, striking with their body itself, giving themselves over to the fury of battle. Restriction, dwarves only. But I don't believe in restrictions based on race, so you're going to have it if you want it. Um, <laughs> yeah, your DM can lift this restriction to better suit the campaign. Makes you wonder why the restriction's there. Uh, it exists for Forgotten Realms. Whatever. Okay, and then, so do we want to do the Blowfish Barbarian? Oh, spiked um, armor. You could have wait, spiked armor. Wait, Quinn's right. Blowfish theme. Spiked armor. Spiked armor. And then when like she rages, it turns into a mosh pit. You're right. You're right. With the spiked armor, she's just running into people violently. It's like incredible. She goes, she goes into the rage, and the spikes grow bigger. Uh, it's her like a 14th whole level aesthetic. ability is called Spiked Retribution. Oh, good. Incredible. Yeah, see, it's it's all about piercing. Damn it. Ooh, a nice, tasty little blowfish aesthetic. And this is sort of the situation where... Maybe you are in a homebrew game and you don't need the lore of this, right? You don't need that it's dwarven and stuff. You just need the the concept, right? Yeah. Spiky armor, here are the stats. You can take it and make it your own, right? So that's that's the nice thing about Skag is there all that lore can be optional. Hannah Splendana is incredible. Um, I, so I'm not 100% sure. Let me see what kind of feats my we might have it pulled up uh, oh, okay. let's see so let me see if we have new skag feats let's find out it doesn't look like it but that's okay um do we want ability score increase or do we want feats yeah i want her to have more charisma charisma how many two all dose charisma okay next uh we game class features gosh okay so we got ability score increase battle rager armor danger sense extra attack fast movement rage and reckless attack um which it's great that the character mancer did all that for me because even though this game has drag and drop if i had to 
track and like search for all that stuff, I would be very lazy. I have a tendency to forget things and then get um, distracted. And then, and then TK, uh, you'll see here in the game, if mm -hmm. you look at your page listings, <gasps> I'm ready. Um, you have um, a map called uh, Hannah's Summer Home. Hannah's Summer Home. Where... It should be the second one. Oh, it's the second one. Incredible. I love it. So let's, you can let's go take ahead and a load glance. that up. <gasps> it's and beautiful. We can, and we can, um, this is this is her mom's house. It's time for us um, to play house. I'm ready. And then you can go ahead and drag Hannah Splendana out onto the <laughs> All right, so I'm going to teach you all something real quick. Hot, Hannah Splendana's token is obviously too big. And... Right. I can shrink it every single time, but I don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Hannah Splendana right here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, and we're going to click edit right here. And we okay. see we got a default token right there. We're going to remove that. We're going to go back to this one. And we're going to right click advanced. Set dimensions, units, 1v1, and then we're going to use select, save it, and hopefully this doesn't make me look like a fool, because if I look silly after this, everybody has to just pretend it didn't happen. See? And now every time we drag it out, it's exactly wow. the images we need. That's the hottest tip. <laughs> that's, that's what they pay us the big bucks for. That was incredible work, TK. Thank you. One sec. Wow. I just realized that I'm like clipping through my uh, stuff right here. I'm going to fix it. It's oh, me, yeah. TK. Because my arm like went into the... <laughs> <laughs> and nobody in chat told me, you meanies. It's okay. Uh, Killjoy wants to know if you can also save vision and light tokens that yes. way as well. Yes, you can. You can. Wow, a little, little hot tip right there. Yes, you can. So wow. if I edit and then remove, yes, please delete. Um, whoa, calm down. Uh, and then I set her dynamic lighting, night vision. Let's she see, she's light. got, she radiates light. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let me. Um... I don't think she has night vision. Elves oh, wait, do. Yeah, that... she's an elf. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's say she emits a low light of, like, 60 feet. Okay. Um, and let's save those changes. So, so we see this. So 60 then we use select token. No, oh, no. We okay. might delete this. Hopefully this doesn't make me look like a fool. Because <laughs> I would not, I would not, Mr. 20 might sass me. See? Ta-da! And then it just radiates. Wait, so you could even save lamps. Yes. And just drag and drop lamps yes. every time you needed ambient lighting. Yes, you could. And save me minutes, if not hours, of work. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. We've learned so much today. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you don't have to copy tokens to another page. But if you did have to copy tokens to another page, you could just duplicate the page. Yeah, we have that, like that this. pure See? duplication feature Object now. and tokens. Oh, it so duplicates nice. your entire token layer if you so. But maybe desire. you don't want the map. You just want yeah. the sweet tokens. You could just go you can, boop. You can unselect the map. Yeah, That's so nice. Now, granted, it is map and lighting, so, but yeah, you could just do that and then delete the map once it gets there. So now, Hannah Splendana is walking around her house. That's it's so nice. nice. Isn't that cool? And now it's you all know cool. how to save lighting stuff and sizing whenever you're playing a game but okay so now she's in the living room mm -hmm. she's she's over by the fireplace yeah oh uh actually uh you know she <laughs> you what know you uh her mom's not home she's been at work all the time um you know it, it's kind of hard but you know she it's you know it's summertime she okay. looks she looks underneath the tree Oh man, I under uh, the stalling. tree in summertime. Uh, under, under, she looks underneath the fireplace. She looks under the rollvember tree. Uh, the rollvember tree. Hey, if you didn't know, we're doing a roll. We're doing rollvember here this year at the end of 2020. Keep an eye out on all social media for that information. 
And you know, she's just, she goes, <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever done. She goes, um, and, you know, she sees underneath the fireplace are some presents. Oh my gosh, I forgot that I put her on the dynamic layer. One sec, everybody. <laughs> wondering why i couldn't see her i was so confused um that's you know, my she bad looks, she, she looks underneath the the fireplace and she finds some presents um and so this is my very long-winded segue into how many new items the dmg has i i'm um, not going to bring up the fact that you could have searched the token library to to get a present no you're right library. um <laughs> because i love the png squares <laughs> I know. I really, I really didn't do a good all job. All right, of this all right. One. What kind of I items hope everybody are we still giving? Keeps me around. <laughs> what are we um, giving Hannah? I just want to look at some of the cool DMG items. The DMG has some great items. Okay, and I love looking at them. Yeah, let's let's give a. Ooh, we've got explosives. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, magic items. So, oh, so these are additional rules, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so these handouts are additional rules. I just want to see if any of the thing is that... Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. Can I... Can I add that to this? I don't know if oh. you can add handouts. I don't think so. That's okay. No. Heck it. Um, um, but yeah. this will have the information. Good lord. Oh my gosh. Dr Dwarven May. Ifridi chain. What is Ifridi chain? What is that? <gasps> Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Show to players. Yes, show to everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Look at this. This is look at this Ooh. nice chain armor. Oh. A plus three bonus to AC and immunity to fire damage. Are yeah, you kidding me? Don't mind if I heck and do dagger of venom. Ooh. Oh, how, I'm sorry. Is, you can't see that. How has Hannah Splendana earned these great items, though? Oh, she's incredible. Yeah. She's rich. Oh, she's so rich. rich. I didn't yeah. know that her parents were rich, oh, but she's that so tracks. Rich. No, she's rich. Her parents aren't rich. But anyway, oh, the... she got all that bounty hunter yeah. cash. You're... I see. Katie May is very excited about the items because the dungeon master gra... the dungeon master's guide comes with five hundred new items. They all have drag and drop capabilities, uh, and we're gonna <laughs> and we're gonna look at them. I love an alchemy jug. I love an alchemy jug. That's right. We could do alchemy jugs now. It's very exciting because we, we couldn't do alchemy jugs before. Um, so we couldn't give. <laughs> we One couldn't of the spouts is mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yes. It, it pours a lot of mayonnaise. Uh, let's do. She gets an alchemy jug. Let's uh, let's drag that alchemy jug over into her items. Boom. There it is, baby. Hey, right at the bottom. So now you see, there she goes. Now she owns it. Oh, unboxing un unboxing by the fireplace. Unbox Alchemy jug. Alchemy jug. Incredible. Um, what else does she have? An airship, an entire airship. This is this is the thing here. I think maybe the reason I'm excited about items is like when DDEN played in person, I would always hand them item cards. Mm -hmm. And the second I handed them the item card, I forgot what it said on the item card because I would like handwrite them out. And so then like once I had given mm -hmm. it away, it immediately fled from my mind. And, <laughs> and so just to have a place where I know that it's there, and I can go see it, and my players can see it, and we all can agree what it is, what it means. This is also good if you're looking for inspiration. Yeah. In fact, TK, let's say that I just ran my, my, my players through a battle and I know that they need some kind of reward, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure what kind of reward they deserve. Do you have anything maybe for me? I probably do. I mean, there are several new tables available. Well, what do you say? There what are, are these yeah. tables. Uh, we've got tables for like magic items and stuff. They're very cool. Such as, look, we're going to go with table number one. Pull that. Let's see what we get. Come Ooh. on. A spell scroll. First level spell scroll. That's very exciting. Oh, just a first level spell scroll. That's cool. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. Give me give me more Neat. loot. All more right. Loot. Let, me, let me get one from like table F, which has like 60 items. Oh, no. Table G has like 88 items. Ooh, a plus one chain shirt. Yeah. 
That's so rad. Yeah, it's very cool. So you can just, like, go through here and uh, actually, like, <laughs> use the tables that came with the DMG, which are very fun. But it's so nice that because... My, do my random items table macro bar. Oh, oh man, y'all can't see it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I added the random item tables to the macro bar down at the bottom. Uh, most people know where a macro bar is on Roll20. It's usually down under the player names. Um, TK is hiding it. I am. It's my fault. Um, if I if I go invisible for a second, whoo-hoo, where'd I go? <laughs> Nerd. But there it was. You're I've had right. two cans of Coke. I'm wild. Um, Slux and Arrow in chat, uh, you have a question. It is, what is the difference between the DMG and the rules already pre-installed in the Roll20 room? And what's the advantage to having the compendium? So the compendium uh, exists. You just get the standard rules, uh, the SRD, which comes mm -hmm. with every um, Roll20 room. But stuff like the Dungeon Master's Guide, we just looked through 500 additional items that you can just drag and drop onto a character sheet. Mm -hmm. We have uh, many example light uh, maps that come equipped with uh, dynamic lighting, which you don't have to do yourself. So it's all about like, the, the whole point of the DMG that Roll20 wanted to stay true to was to cut down on DM prep time and make your prep easier. So when you have those instantly added items, when you have rollable tables for loot or things, if you have rules about, um, I don't remember which rules exactly were in the DMG, but I know that there are specific rules for, um, oh God, <laughs> but when you have stuff like that, um, for vehicles, that's what I, that was what I was going to say. So for like keelboats and galleys and long ships, mm -hmm. when you have all that information available there, um, it's just one less uh, blocker for a dungeon master um, here at the game. Because you can always, like, I have, I, lo I love me a book. It's there behind me. The DMG is right behind me. The point of this is having it at your fingertips to make your sessions go faster and smoother. Um, so that's, that's the main point. You yeah. can always put this into Roll20 yourself. But I think we did just mention that it was 500 magic items. Yeah. And that's going to take you at least 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, by 10 minutes, I mean many hours. I forgot to I forgot to mention that we do also have some token packs, too, from these. Oh, did token packs come with? Yes! <gasps> That's so exciting. So we got a I'm DMG a, one. I, I will tell you right now, I simp for token packs. Um, I love token packs in my game. I love having very cool looking NPCs. Even when um, a new expansion comes out, if I know that I'm not going to use any of the rules or the info, like Icewind Dale just came out and I was like, Icewind Dale is such a cool book, but I don't like I'm, I'm running a homebrew campaign. I don't need this. Ooh, but all these tokens, yum, 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 mm -hmm. yum. They're NPCs in my campaign now. Yep. Um, so even if you were just like a person who just needs a fun, some fun looking. Yeah. So Ugh. we've got all this oh, nice all so art good. from Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Um, and then we also have some packs from, we have a pack from the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. Yeah. This is this is actually very good information for me personally on a personal level. Yeah. Um, I, TK knows this about me. Especially if you're tired of kind of using the same few, like, basic pack ones over and over again. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really great to have um token packs that are still within like the kind of same art style as all right. the other ones you're using so you right. don't feel like that that much break of an immersion and we don't have to go scouring for <laughs> montana potion if you want one of my like dm pro tips i always make a um and you'll and you'll see this when you have when you make modules when mm -hmm. you upload modules i always have a page in my homebrew campaign just titled tokens and when i'm like looking through this list if i'm seeing like a token that i'm like ooh, that inspires something in me i drag yes. and i drop it onto the token page so that when the time comes around that i need to make a new npc i can go back to that token page and be like what was tickling my fancy five weeks ago that i've forgotten about until now yes for sure and that's my hollow pro tip from me to you yeah so i am going to do one last page because i think we've kind of talked about almost everything but i do want to do one last page 
page because I want to show off a new thing for um uh no nah, not this one let's yeah let's will you just will you pull that up TK map. um if you guys have any questions in chat about the DMG or Skag or if just you have any general roll twenty questions that we can answer for you uh let city. us know in chat and we'll try to answer them before we head out before we gotta get ready for Mythic Odysseys of Theros Theros in less than one hour over on Twitch.tv slash D and D a whole hour. Sorry, uh, I got very actually excited. no. It's, it's no, actually it's like forty-eight minutes until Mythic Odysseys of Theros. That's not oh, true. Oh, I love these little Elons. That's not true. Oh, an hour and forty-five minutes. Yes. I have no concept of time. We, we do have to jump into Zoom in about forty-eight minutes. But That's... other than that, I'm like, don't rush me, Katie May. <laughs> TK, start DMing now. Now you are on the clock. So I, I don't know. I just got very excited. Uh, even though we bought, we built up Hannah Splendana because I was on Twitter the other day and I saw that Roll Twenty um had a new thing in the marketplace for the weather <gasps> oh, overlays. I, I'm very excited for you to show this off. I'm so excited. Um, so I, I don't know which one I should do. Should I do rain? Should I do fog? Which I want one? rain. Rain? Should we do? Oh God! Should we do rain top, rain regular, rain storm? Which one? Rain There's storm, so many. Please. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I think this this map will be okay for it. Let's and do... then Ty, I will answer your question directly Ooh, after we show this off because do... that's a very good question. Let's do this one. Yeah. So I'm gonna drag it on over. Come on. Don't be, don't be sassy. I'm clicking it in the wrong place. This is operator error, just so everyone knows. Yeah, how are things going for you over here? Could you, could you be nice to me for <laughs> sorry, five seconds? I'm sorry, I'll be less mean. I'm so sorry, I was so mean. I only, I ask so little. Oh my Do gosh, you? I keep, I keep dragging the wrong part of it. <laughs> I, I don't even know what's happening to you over here. I don't either. Like, I really, um, I'm tired and I just, okay. there it is. Okay, now I need to just make this bigger. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to laugh at you. Don't I be believe mean in you so me. hard. That's the thing is I have to be nice to TK because they are about to DM for me in like an, so an amount go... of time as we just found out. So I would really like them to not ruin my life. I so think I'm going to do 15 by 15 units real quick okay. just to see if this gets bigger. Come on. I believe in you. Oh, how did it go? Oh, you know what? It's working. I just the um. <laughs> oh, it looks so cool though. It is working. One sec. I just everything is so bright on my computer that I can't hardly see. Oh, I have that's the thing. No is it's very idea. yeah. It's very light. Okay, let me chat, let me find a dark light. one. Let me find okay, a, you'll a find dark, a dark map. page. But as you can see, we picked a like a lesser one. So that's just some light rain. Yeah. Um, you see that there's fog and storms. And ooh, delicious, maybe, delicious. Maybe it'll look better on this one. Because it really looks better on a dark background. Let me... Okay. Oh, this will be a good one for that. Oh, I hope so. Because I really want to show this off, but I don't. Mm -hmm. You know what would have been smart? <laughs> what? You know what would have been smart is um going to the main page, deleting the books off of it. <laughs> And just using a black background. That's what I thought you were going to do. Well, you know what? I'm a fool, so... Okay. So maybe don't be mean to me, because I'm I so don't sorry. deserve it. I'm so sorry. Um, so, when it comes to double-checking that you did your player's night vision, cor uh, vision and night vision correctly... <gasps> wow, it looks so good! Did I put it on the back? Yeah, there um, we go. You can uh, click on a token, and we'll show you this in a minute. We're not showing you the rain. Yay. You can click on a token and then press Control L, and it'll show you what that token is set up to see. Um, then you can Control L out of it to no longer see that. So yeah, that was the rain. The rain looks yeah. so good. You've got fog, dust, the fog snow. Looks good too. It's so nice, and it's just like a little. It's that little spice that we were yeah. talking about to really like send a session over the edge. I wish I had some of this for some of my earlier encounters. Like for just sure. that fog, that fog makes me anxious in a good way. Like if I want to make my players feel like they don't know what's happening, just throwing out that fog is just is, is such a quick way for me as a dungeon master to create that tension and that fear. Um, yeah. So what a nice little tool. 
And then, uh, TK, will you hop it's back to Hannah's, Hannah's Blundana? I would uh, love to. show to... the control L functionality. <gasps> oh, yeah. Let's go back to Hannah's Blundana's summer home. Oh, okay. Jaden, I think, okay, so if we had to um, censor some of the tokens in Cobalt Press uh, if Gore was an issue, if it didn't even work with our marketplace, I think that your best bet would be to reach out to Cobalt Press to ask if they have tokens available. Yeah. Um, or an art pack, because uh, if it didn't work for our marketplace, it just won't work for our marketplace. Um, so I think that's going to be your best bet. I'm going to get rid of the gifts, sorry. Okay. How dare so, you? I worked so hard on those presents. Hannah Splendana. This is Control L, where I've gone from my view as a GM to Hannah Splendana's view as a player. Now, if you don't have um, if you don't have your dynamic lighting turned on, what it's going to do, especially if you're in Chrome, is hi highlight your uh, location bar. <laughs> your your address bar um because that's a quick key for chrome but once you have the uh dynamic lighting turned on uh roll 20 will override that and just let you look at your character so yeah so yeah you can you if you if you move around you'll be able to see and then once you're done you just control l right out of it and then you don't have to or uh, fuss click to the it. side i and if you're ever having if you ever like want to triple check and make sure you can always make a fake character off, that you have shared with only you, and then you can press the button, if you'll show it in settings right now, um, it's ca Four, called rejoin two, as player. Five. Um, and then you can just rejoin as a player to make sure that you have your lighting all set up. You can pretend to be a player and go through your little maze. Um, and that's a way that I like doing it as well, just because like reveals are so important to me that I always like to triple check and make sure that I have that reveal set up. Um, so yes, that's how that's how Yay. you do that in Roll20. Um, so yeah, I always suggest having a test character um, and it's, it's a rather common practice for more um, intense dynamic lighting DMs, which I am not one, but yes. I aspire to become one someday. Yeah, if it's important to you that your players not be able to walk through walls, Go ahead and turn on your, um, not explore mode. I'm looking for something else. Oh, I think it's on the front page. Do, do, mm. do, do. Dynamic lighting barriers restrict. And that way. You will not be able to walk through a wall. There you go. Now you have a maze. You can't walk or see through walls. Which is so intense and so spooky. It also means that the doors, if you want them to be locked, they'll be locked. But, you know, as the, obviously as the GM, if you're watching it in the dynamic lighting layer, you can always grab the door, move it to the side, and then... And now that door's swung open, baby. Yeah, and now that door is open, and... The door wide open. She can walk through there into the next room. There she goes. Incredible. There she goes again. Yeah. Um, so, uh, sorry, go ahead, Katie Mae. No, I was just gonna say, I think that, I think that, I think that we went through Skag and the DMG. I, I think we showed everybody what adding these to your games I, has to offer. I think I'm very we did excited. it. I think we're business boys. Uh, two business lads with Hannah's blonde, Anna. <laughs> um, we made a very cursed, a uh, PC <laughs> that you are, please put her in your game. Please. Just as a simple little NPC, sprinkle around the universe. Please. Urban Bounty Google. Hunter, Hannah Splondana, Aquatic Elf, An Half Blowfish. Yeah, incredible. Uh, just so uh, just, she, ooh, her pronouns, Chaotic Evil. Chaotic Evil for sure. That's just a gift sure. from us to you. Yeah. The rest of this was a gift from Roll20 to you. But that yeah. one's straight from TK and KM. From my heart, carries an alchemy jug. Only, only gives out mayo. <laughs> mayo carries only. Carries an alchemy jug. <laughs> only put it on a sandwich. Um, please, yeah. Hannah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, if sandwich. enough people follow Katie May on Twitch, we will release her <laughs> her <laughs> SoundCloud <laughs> EP. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh she's a rapper, obviously. That is SoundCloud, you know it. Yeah. Um she, oh, she gosh, does rebel country rap. Time. Um Oh god. Oh no, now you made me hate her. I loved her so much and now I can't stand her. No, she loves you. Alright. Um say goodbye to well, me. 
Uh, this has been uh, an ultimate walkthrough of DMG and SCAG. Uh, to everyone live in chat, thanks for joining us. To the people watching the VOD at home, I see you. And thanks for checking us out. I've been Katie May. You can find me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash okkatiemay. I also have a thriving Twitch channel where tomorrow I'll be playing uh, Calico, which is a fun little magical girl cat cafe game that I'm super excited to try out. So I'm saying hi in chat if you want to go follow Follow me there and watch me do that tomorrow. In an hour and a half, we're going to be live with uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros over on the D&D Twitch channel, where the wonderful TK Johnson DMs for us. And I am vibrating with excitement. They're an incredible DM. If you have not watched them do their stuff, you should. Uh, this, this would be a fun episode for you to come to, you know, for the first time. It's a feral one. Um, what else do you got going on, TK? Tell them all about you. It's me, it's TK. I write spooky stories on the internet. If you like spooky stories, then you can read them at my website, tkjwrites.com, I think is what it is. I don't know, I haven't updated in a while. <laughs> uh, or you can follow me on Twitter, TK Joins the Fray. Um, I don't know why Katie May is being nice to me because I killed both her and Carlos two weeks ago. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> Maybe we're friends. My I don't PC know. is dead. But she, her, her name in was death, Daphne, and I love her. In death, she's kind of also living her best best life. That's so. true. She she didn't live until she died. It's what I'll say about that. I mean, do any of us? Uh, <laughs> Friday. Us. <laughs> Friday. Uh, oh, can we announce the this? whole group? Yeah, of course we can. Oh, Carlos I was like did, telling like, people that we got a secret stream. Oh, I, I yeah. forgot that we could say Carlo, it. Yeah, Carlos did last week on the uh, round table. So if he says, if we're fired, then whatever. He's not our real boss. It's fine. <laughs> Eat it, Carlos. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing like a Home Alone stream themed uh game with carlos as the dm on friday it's gonna be cool uh he says that we can't kill kevin but we're gonna try he's not our real dad so we gonna do it we're gonna do it yeah he's just gonna be like please stop murdering please stop murdering yeah. the whole stream and it's gonna be sweet revenge for any time he's taken a bit five minutes too long during it's, any one of our streams it's gonna be incredible it's gonna be so good every every time i destroy the world that he is so meticulously built i'm gonna look at That's, him and be like i'm indoor Ooh, pure serotonin yeah uh, anyways so this has been us thank you for tuning in we hope you like this if you did like it maybe comment that you did uh on the youtube vod so that maybe we can come do this again with the next stuff yeah out. we'll maybe do we more take a look at tasha's or just get real wily certified cursed character every time we do this yeah stream. and if you don't like it don't tell anyone because i don't want to get fired so no. just yes. keep it to yourself <laughs> So uh, we will see some of you in just uh, in just over an hour. But to everyone else, good night and good luck with your gaming. Happy adventuring, folks. All right. We're going out on dabs. One, two, three. Bye. Incredible. You did it, Katie Mason. Goodbye to the nice people. Good night.